Happy National Tattoo Day, everybody. Um, today we'll be having a special guest on our show discussing his trip in Guam. We'll also be talking about tattoos, pains and do's and don'ts. Also, culture shock. So stay tuned and see you guys in a bit. Um, you typed from wrong. Okay, I'm at Spirit Reflections Tattoo in Edinburgh, and, and no! we're here for Steven's 18th birthday, and he's getting a tattoo, and we've been here for the past three hours, and Steven's been yelling. Yeah, I know you said it's going to hurt for a little while. Well, it still hurts. We gotta get that Let it heal. We have to finish. All right, it's going to be okay. It's going to quit hurting. After a few, it'll quit hurting. Yeah, you said that last time, and it still hurts like crap. All right, well, are you ready again? Let's try this one more time. Just go. Right, sure? Yes, just go. Ow! No, that freaking hurts. There's blood on me. Here, let's wipe it off. No! Wipe it off. Because that's dirty. You're dirty. <laughs> Don't touch me with it. You have to wipe the blood off of it. Yeah, one, one second. Just, just one second. let him wipe it off. It freaking stinks. Look, you know what? You're the one that wanted this. Yep, you got it. You've been asking for Look, two years. Look, it's almost done. Years. We'll be done another, I'd say, two hours. <laughs> we'll be done soon. That's not funny. One Just more finish. Time. All right. <laughs> breathe, all right? Just breathe. Duh, I'm going to breathe. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. <coughs> Happy National Tattoo Day. Welcome to To Talk. And as you can see, that was some crazy stuff. I never saw that before. Maybe I saw parts of it, but that's just insane. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first, I just want to let you guys know we're live. For those of you that are watching for the first time, please comment, engage with us. We're going to be talking tattoos. We have a special guest today, Rich. Uh, he's from he's from Guam. He's tomorrow. And uh, he just went to Guam. So... Yeah. Yeah. Name's Rich Duenas. Rich uh, Duenas. I'm also Samoan and, and Hawaiian. Just, okay. Yeah. Just a little. Like half. Uh, actually, I'm more Samoan than I am tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning <laughs> new things. That's why you're on, so we can get to know yeah. each other right, right. more. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate you coming on. Yeah. No problem. And we got John here, co-host. Uh, Missing James. He's, he's out doing some work right now. But we, we're going to be talking about... Tattoos l later. We're gonna end with the culture shot. You guys aren't gonna w wanna <laughs> miss that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be painful for me to to watch that. But uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So, anyway, we just got back from Arizona. It was a good trip. 
got to spend time with the family. Thank you guys for um, engaging. It was a good show. If you guys missed it, go ahead and watch it. I tattooed my dad again. Um, I showed a homemade tattoo gun. Oh, we did a bunch of stuff. We ate a squirrel. <laughs> what? And then, and then they felt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so we're kind of letting letting Rich here know what we're going to do. We're about to do it right now. We do culture food, and we're going to start off with that. Um, so Auntie Adele helped us today with our culture food. She was a guest before, and uh, she's from Hawaii. And she went ahead and made the culture food for us today. And what we do is... We do a what's in the box challenge. So you guys have a chance to go ahead and fill it. Now, if you guys guess what it is after you fill it, then you guys get a pass on the culture shot. You're going to want that pass, though. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. You're going to want that pass. So we're going to give them a chance to fill what it is, and then we're going to we're gonna try it. Um, it's always exotic or different, but we'll see. We'll see what it is. I told them that it can't hurt them. <laughs> it can't hurt them. But, Physically. you know, it might be alive, it might not, yeah. it might be dead, it might be alive, I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find out, out yeah. we'll find out we'll a little see. bit, yeah. So, let's, let's just start it off, um, I have it right here. <laughs> so, how are we going to do it? How are we going to do this? We're going to, I think Nick's first. <laughs> you know, it's funny, because <laughs> Nick's over here, and he's trying to act like he's the camera guy. <laughs> but but he's got to um he's got to do I this. The so let's cover that up. All right guys. Now again, this is live. You guys can go ahead and guess what it is too. I don't think you guys are going to Oh, maybe. Maybe you guys will find out. Okay, you guys aren't on your phones or nothing, right? No. All right. Oh shoot. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Go ahead and move that cuz it's going to okay. go right here. Yeah. You can't see it, right? Oh, Come no, I can't. See I'll, I'll just look this way. Sorry. Right, Come to the middle. Oh, we supposed to look? Yeah, yeah, don't look. Yeah, don't look. Don't look. Okay, there you go. Go ahead and fill it. Be Are we good? Don't. D um, just go <laughs> softly, though. Dude. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm in. Go ahead, fill it. What, what do you think it is? That's different. It's dude. very different than what we've done. Dude, come on. Is it moving? Is it moving? I don't know. The box is moving. <laughs> just dude, be like, gentle. Can I just say it? Move your finger. <laughs> your finger's like pushing my finger. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, what was that? <laughs> you you barely touched it, but go ahead. No, all right, okay, I touched it. All right, next person. Nick, come on. You got to fill it. You got to fill it. You got to feel it. Go ahead and fill it. Dude, this is not cool, man. Don't do my arms. Don't be stuck. too rough. I know. My arms you can't, stuck. It can't hurt you, but dude, that's crap, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, I touched it. Okay, I touched right it. Right there. It's fill soft. It. It's no, soft. Fill it, soft fill it, fill it. I did. It touched my hand. Just don't go hard. Just don't move yeah. too much. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's on my finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fill yeah, it. yeah. Rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it. Oh fuck, it's moving, dude. Rub, rub it, rub it. What do you think? It I is? don't know. It's something in there. What is that? <laughs> it feels like like a bone or like a nail. What is it? It can't. It won't hurt you. Dude, this is not cool, man. No, it won't hurt you. There you go. There oh, you go. dude, it's a, like, a, like 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 hands. <laughs> I don't know, like like a finger. <laughs> I don't know. This is not funny, dude. Okay, okay, okay. It's a finger. Okay, so <laughs> what kind of finger do you think it is? I think that was the middle one. <laughs> 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 All right, so we, we got one guess. It's a middle finger. Okay. All right, John. Go ahead. Oh, sick. Be gentle. What the? Was that a pencil? <laughs> <laughs> what? Dude, I'm pissed if it's gentle, gentle, gentle. Gentle, like? Oh. No, be gentle. Like, pretty oh. bird. Like. Like, like you're pinning. <laughs> That's not a hand. I don't know. I felt something it's I felt foot. like a finger. No, it's not. I know what it is. Be soft. Be soft. Okay. Better not be like a penis. It's like a... <laughs> <laughs> That's what you guys make it sound like. It's like, <laughs> it's like some yeah. sort of plant or something, I think. Okay. That's your guess? That's okay. my guess. Okay. That's All my right, guess. Right. One more. <clears throat> Do it. Be gentle, though. Don't, uh, don't be rough, because okay. these guys... I 
Yeah, it feels like a marker or something. <laughs> uh, that's it. Um, Come on, you go. Do you have to wash here. your hands? Oh. Do I have to wash my hands? Yeah. You guys are going to want to wash your hands. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, you got the wipes. Is that a... Uh, that's when you know it's bad. Yeah. Trust me. Did you invite anyone, right? Huh? Did you invite anyone? No, I didn't invite me. Uh, Okay, so what do you guys think? All right, we got some good... Yep. People know what it is. See? I mean, well, they see it, so... Oh, they see it? Yeah, they they, they get to see it. I think it's a... I have to wash your hands. Yeah, wash it good. Wash it good. Uh, You said it was a hand? A a middle finger. So Nick said it's a middle finger. (laughs) Man. Tell something. I just... It's it's some sort of plant. I don't know. I think it's a plant. First, I thought it was a pencil. Or like a pen or something, but oh no! I, okay, I'm we're just gonna, gonna say the backside of a marker because it makes me feel like it's something else. What? Like, yeah. like, I'm a, <laughs> <laughs> like what? Yeah, because if I don't want to wash my hands, like you know, <laughs> you know, like a sharpie, the shape of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what it felt like. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's yeah, in a I sense, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna go with. Okay. Well, let, let me I'd rather keep this uh, PG-13. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you some facts, okay? So, let me see. So, it's a Hawaiian dish or Polynesian, okay? Um, There is, it's a mixture of of different foods and there is a, there is an alive uh, animal, different, different animal. So, it's a normally green, like the whole dish. And I guess in one serving, there's about 320 calories. Really? So what do you guys think it is? <laughs> this is so messed up. That's good facts right there. That was good facts. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys, uh, I'm going to let you guys try it. I, need, I think I know what it is. I need a, there you go. Never mind. I don't, know I don't know what that is. I don't want to spill it. Can you guys see it? Okay. Here. Where's the... Uh... Well, that doesn't look like a pencil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, a mid- or a middle or, finger. Or a All finger. Right guys, here we go. Let I me think, get the I animal. Think I, know what I it gotta is. get. Hold on. I gotta get like. I gotta get a good amount here. Okay, you guys gotta eat it all. Okay. What kind of animal do they put in there? Yeah. Um, is it a specific type of animal? Is it like a land or sea? Gotta guess, man. Oh God. Gotta guess. Now. <laughs> smells good though. See, people know what it is though. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. Now, Rich, you might know what it is, and John, you might know, but Nick, oh. this should be a first. Yes. This should be a first, and you know what? I'm going to save this. Oh, what? I'm going to save Taro? it. No. Okay, so for those of you that don't know what this is, it's served in luau's in Hawaii. Um, and let's watch a video. Let's go ahead and see what this is. It's good, though. It's good, huh? Aloha gang, this is Chef Makakwan, KTA, Quick and Ono Recipes. Today we're gonna make Squid Luau. Prep squid, remove eyes, ink sac, head, and beak. Chop squid and set aside. Clean luau leaves by removing center stalk and wash under cold water. Melt butter in medium pot. Add onions, garlic, and squid and saute for about five minutes. Then add luau leaves, coconut milk, sugar, two cups of water, salt and pepper, simmer for about two to three hours. When finished, adjust with salt and pepper. Enjoy it with a bowl of rice and ice cold beer. For this recipe and more, go to ktsuperstores.com slash. All right, there you have it. Squid luau. It was good, man. Yeah, it was it's good, good, right? Yeah. yeah. You like it? Pump. Yeah. You tried <laughs> no, right? it? Rich, huh? you tried no, that before? No, I've had that before. No? No. <clears throat> Just missing well, the, man, now you the beer and yeah. the, the rice. Yeah. 
That's right. Uh, right. So it was like, really good. well, shit, why are we stopping? <laughs> <laughs> know, <right>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's good. So, Auntie Dale, thank you. Mahalo for that. Um, and we got to get her back on. We got, you know, her and her whole family. Did she make they, the lalas at the, the party? Yeah. They, oh, she, man. She made the lalas. You liked yeah, it? Yeah, that was good, dude. Yeah. I think and I stole somebody who was on their plate that day. There was no more, so I was like, ah, no one's eating this. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the one. <laughs> yeah, that was you. Oh, that was yours? Oh, my yeah, bad, it was warm, too. Did she bring it over here? Yeah. She oh, just really? made it. It's fresh. Oh, yeah. Man, that's it's good, fresh. man. We'll yeah. give you something to take home. Um, so, yeah, there you have it. Squid Luau. Now you guys know. Um, and now you know how to make it. Yeah. It's not too bad, right? No, it's a lot easier than, yeah. Only hard thing is to get the taro leaves. True, yeah. But Auntie actually plants it. Oh really? Oh, yeah, yeah that's she right. has a whole bunch it. in her backyard. Superfood, right? Yeah, yeah, it is it's everything. So let's uh, let's get to know Rich. What's up, man? Let's get to know Rich. Um, so I got to know you. I I met you a long time ago. So uh, you're from the original. You're one of the original members of Tribal Theory. Yeah, is that right? Yep, original member for there, and. Um, yeah, I think we met about 14, 15 years ago. Yeah, man, that's so long ago. Uh, got <laughs> tatted by Josh, met up through a mutual friend. and um, Yeah, that was a long time ago. You, I think you were just starting Island Tat or? Yeah, it was around the time I was, um, yeah, probably, f- yeah, first, second year in, probably. Yeah. Something like that. But you hadn't, you hadn't done Island Tat at PIFA yet or anything like that. I don't I forget I remember the condo that we were in <laughs> yeah. and I remember doing Island Tat back then but I I don't that was a long time ago yeah so, it was a long time ago uh, yeah. but yeah so um, I'm local here I was born and raised uh, my family's uh, Chamorro my dad's Samoan my uh, mom's uh, Chamorro and Hawaiian and I was born here born and raised and kind of learned the the ways of the, the American culture and found my way into dancing um about when I was 15 years old and kind of followed my culture through there, but it's kind of hard to be cultural and conscientious of what you're doing when you're raised out here because your grandparents who know all the culture don't really ingrain that into you right. um, because they're so worried about you being where you are and focused at, at and today that you kind of lose some of it. And so you're just kind of backtracking now and trying to keep the culture and try to do all that. And so we have a dance group here um, as well, a Micronesian Chamorro dance group. Um, What's it called? Irentia. Irentia. Yeah, which means inheritance and uh, <coughs> tomorrow. Cool. Yeah, so there, we did that and um, yeah, I played music for a while. Did that for about eight years. Uh, danced Polynesian for 15 to 17 years. And you dance with uh, Cialci. Yeah, Cialci right? Vemao and uh, Ida Vemao uh, up in um, Claremont now. Um, Cleo and Alani. And so we did that for a long time, yeah. So, I mean, that's everything in a nutshell, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's everything cool. Everything can elaborate. So, so, the Chamorro dancing that you have, mm-hmm. it's called a guma, right? Yeah. Which and means house. Which, which is like halal yeah. in Hawaiian. Yes. And uh, how many dance groups are out there here in, in San Diego? As far as uh, Chamorro? Chamorro, strictly. Um, just, I think there's three. So, there's um, us, which is Urencha, Unuhit, and then there's um, Imahe and Tautotano. So Unuhit is um, we are one, and Imahe and is images of the people of the land. And okay. so that's actually where I learned my Chamorro dancing from was under uh, Rose Matanonia. And she got me into it when I was about like 18, right after I graduated. Uh, she was dancing with me in the Polynesian group, and um, she took me to my first Festival Pacific Arts out there in New Caledonia. Mm-hmm. And I met Uncle Frank Rabon and a bunch of other mm. Chamorro dancers, and that's what kind of sparked me as far as uh, dancing was concerned. And dancing more for my Chamorro community as well. So, and you just went to Guam. So, yeah. I mean, I just redid his. I redid his tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Um, because we we crossed paths again, and I totally want to redo that. I mean, it, it was 14 years ago. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it was a while ago. Yeah. But uh, we got to talking, and and you were actually just going to Guam, and you're taking your whole Guma, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. How, pretty how much. many of you went? I think there was like 40 to. 55 of us. Like, I don't know lot. the, That's I don't like know the, the exact plane. number. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it was. a lot. Yeah, I mean, they had to split us up in different flights. And um, my mother-in-law, who's the president of the board, because we have a board as well, um, she um, did a lot of work in trying to get that all working. <clears throat> um, so we got there as far as, um, you know, traveling-wise. Mm-hmm. But, you know, to, to actually be there and, and 
to work with everybody at the same time and make sure you're on schedule. You know what I mean? It, it's I can't rough, imagine man. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too rough, much. Yeah. It's a lot. And Dang. then when you have a bunch of teenagers on there and they have their own um, attitudes and yeah. drama, you know, yeah, like yeah. that just. And, and how, how long have you had this Kuma? Uh, we're going on three, three years. F- yeah. We're at three years right now. Three we'll years. Yeah. And what's, you're taking them to Guam. What's a Guma? Yeah. Is that like your, your group or something? Yeah. Or? So like a, Guma, a halal? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like uh, they call it the house. <clears throat> okay. And so um, we're the house of the inheritance. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. Nice. Okay. So so what did you um, do out there? I mean, all cultural stuff, I'm sure. Right. What, what are some things you learned? So um, we had two weeks out there, and um, we learned uh, – the first day was at a museum, um, and we did a bunch of uh, learning there as far as, like, our history – and it doesn't just date to the ancestral uh, history, like the BC stuff. It also comes to like World War II, which more mm. is, you know, relevant to where we are because that's our grandparents' era. That's um, that's something that we can all kind of connect to, um, the bombing of uh, Pearl Harbor. Um, you know, so we did that first first day. We go into practice the next day. We go to the um, Amut Farm, which the is what? the Amut Farm, which is. Um, the basically the garden where they do like natural healing they call it serahanus oh. and serahanas and so they did uh we went to went to that place and and we learned about like kind of like healing from plants that are that are more culturally nice. mm-hmm. instead of like medication you know what i mean kind of like um, the kapuna or kahuna yeah, in yeah. hawaii right cool so medicine man and yeah all the that. medicine man yeah and you know you learn a little bit about that and you know they they're like well these days cause like witch doctors and you know right right it wasn't you know the way of their healing and so we went there, and um, you know, we they, my kids learned our kids learned a bunch of stuff there. They learned how to make coconut oil. Um, how do you make coconut oil? Um, I didn't get to personally do that. My wife did that. Um, she was with the, a bunch of the girls. I went, we went, walked around the farm, and then we uh, we husked um, coconuts. Coconuts. Yeah, and uh, I know a lot of people were talking shit, whatever. But uh, I mean, I thought I did all right. About what? Uh, <laughs> husking coconut. That's just hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know a what lot I mean? Of work. Like, yeah. <laughs> A lot harder than you think it is. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't know. I think I got a, a bad coconut or something. <laughs> but uh, I got that thing down. You know, it took me like five minutes. But the guy who was like showing us the demonstration, he was doing like thirty seconds. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, just like, down. man, yeah. this ain't you the know, technique ain't, and everything. Yeah, it's like the PIC over there in Hawaii. You know, like, you right, up. right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, now let me see you make fire out of that motherfucker. No, I was kidding. But um, <laughs> but yeah, he they did we did that, and so that's what I was doing. Um. And I think uh, Uncle Nono uh, from our podcast, he, he knows how to do it. He was kind of explaining it last uh, yesterday um, about grating down the coconut. Then you got to boil it, and then you got to fry it, and then the oil comes up. And oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a bunch of stuff. And then that makes candy, coconut candy and stuff Ooh. like that, which was good. I mean, crazy. I like that stuff. But, uh, um, yeah, man, so we did all that stuff. And then she gave us some tips about, like, healing yourself with just plants versus taking medication yeah, for yeah. headaches and stuff like that. What's uh, uh what's one thing that you you took away from that that uh you know from the medicine the healing that you learn you know that you can uh, you can use every day right now Uh actually the thing that there's a plant out there I forgot the name of the plant but there's these little like white little balls and um they're like visine and um I mean we don't have them here in San Diego I've never seen that plant until, hmm. until I was out there but yeah it's just like dropping Do you know what's called? No nah, I forgot. Damn. I forgot. Yeah, I'll get it though. But what do they do? How do they, they, they just, just smash it? it? Yeah, just, no, just squeeze in your eyeball. They what? Just, yeah, it just squirts in your eye, and then, yeah, you just, it's like Visine. Huh. It's yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> and then, obviously, it was the the coconut husking. That's From that that one instance was coconut husking, where to hit it, how to peel it back, right. and then uh, how to take the machete and, and, and open the... Crack it open? Yeah. And then I did the kumzu, of course. Oh, okay. Have you ever done the kumzu? Yeah. 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 What like is that? Telegoyan and all that. Kumzu. What is that? Yeah. Kumzu is like a little little wooden chair you sit on with a uh, metal oh. blade at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah. And oh, that's what that's called. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then you kind of grade the coconut that way, and everyone has their own techniques, you know, like timing and stuff. And then yeah, yeah. I think uh, we just, uh, my parents made telegoyan last week, and they had a, a homemade kumzu at, um, in the garage. Oh, really? Or outside. I think I took a picture. Because I don't know if, if many people know what that is. Let me see. I should have had it ready. Oh, that's all good. Yeah. Um, and then, let's see, the next day we did, uh, we did, I think it was, uh, actually, I think we had a free day for, for once. And so we kind of, like, all went to the beach or kind of, like, did your shopping thing. Yeah. That was the one day we kind of got. And then the following day we went to the Valley of the Lati, which was... Um, 
uh, probably my my favorite one out of all the whole the whole trip. It's where all the Gumas from Guam were on like this one secluded area on Guam. It's down south in Talafofo. Um, we were on a boat and we were like kind of riding up as a as a Guma as a group. And um, when we start pulling up, you just see like almost like 300 dancers sitting there waiting to accept you onto the land. Oh. And they're singing and there's like chanting and. And uh, yeah, man, it's really emotional. Yeah. So sounds cool. Man. Yeah, man, you, you you got to experience a lot yep. of traditional Chamorro culture. Yeah, so it's um, yeah, it's it more like eye opening. You know, like yeah. you're not gonna go out there and you go with this mindset of like learning, but you don't know exactly how you're gonna learn it. And so you, um, yeah, and all the gumos are really um, open. They're fafanagwis, which is like a teacher for um, for uh, a guma. Mm-hmm. So there's masters and then there's there's uh, fafanaguis is what they call them. So, um, yeah, man, they're they're super open and just kind of like whatever you guys need, let us know. We're here to help. And that's awesome. And yeah. you, know, you wouldn't even ask a question. They just be like, here, do you want this? And they just give you start giving you stuff. And one of my dancers learned how to carve while he was out there. Like you know, like obviously he's not gonna be a master carver yet, but he got to to experience his own carving and he got to make his own sanahi. You know what the sanahi is? The, the bone. 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 Oh yeah. yeah, the shell. Our mm-hmm. shell, yeah. yeah. So that's a shell from a gi- like a giant clam, and so they do they peel back the back part. I think they what I mean, Chief Kapoor, right? He he has that like a statue. Oh yeah, on what, his neck. what it, is that only for chiefs? What does that represent? You know, I don't do know, you know if it's for chiefs. I mean, everyone wears them as far as like right. our um, as our as our culture is concerned. I think um, for now, I, at least I, that's how I see it. Is, is something just resembles something that that identified us with our an- ancestral people like in making us indigenous you know but uh, right right you know i don't i don't know that for a fact so i don't want to like that's just there's a lot ancient. of things that the uh, ancient you know uh, hawaiians tomorrow's everyone did that we do now but was reserved for the lee or the chiefs right and we don't know you know and that's what it's all about is bringing it back it's really cool that you're you know you're young and and you're diving into this to teach I mean, everyone, you know, all the young kids, um, the culture and everything. Right. And you're, you have a you have a podcast, too, Par Bar. Yeah. So yes. talk about that. So you talk about um, Par Bar is uh, kind of like some of you guys. It's it's, um, it's cultural, you know. So when I we started Par Bar about two years ago, um, maybe almost three now. But um, we got started with the premise that because I like to listen to podcasts. I like to listen to talk radio. Uh, but I didn't have anything for my for my cultural uh listening you know what i mean so for me i was like man i don't care what i really hear right now i just want to hear something and so yeah, yeah. um one of the other guys from the show uh, vince he was like hey man do you want to start a podcast and i was like sure you know but i need some substance i don't want to be out there just talking a bunch of nonsense or mm-hmm. talking that someone had better than us you know like if you're gonna do music well there's plenty of other people who can who can do music right right but a bunch of better people and and so ours was just culture we didn't know where we wanted to go with culture because we're not there's not too many out there right now um, and so we just kind of said, you know, anybody culturally within our community, that's who we want to bring into the show. If you're a leader, we want you in the show because we want to know what, what the background of stuff. So we've had like Joseph Tamu, who was president of PIFA for two years. Uh, we had the president, um, the vice president from the Guam Club. And so when you talk with them, it's different because you get to know what's happening in the background. Everyone thinks like, right. well, why don't why doesn't PIFA do this and why don't PIFA do that? Or why doesn't uh, the Guam Club do this and why doesn't the Guam Club do that? And when you get to answer straight to your face like we can't we don't have the funding for it we don't have the volunteers for it if people want to come and help us you know by all means we're able to do this but makes um, sense yeah yeah but we can't do it just by trying to hire people because that isn't how the um those nonprofit organizations work yeah right right right, right? so that's cool like that how do how do people find your podcast uh the podcast is par bar cast um on facebook instagram you'll, you'll see par bar cast yeah par bar cast on i think it's, actually i think it's just par bar for um instagram but okay. uh, yeah, it's also parbarcast at gmail dot com, and uh, I think we even have a Twitter, man. But I don't, I'm not responsible for the Twitter stuff. So is there a link? Someone asked. Is there uh, a link? Yeah, I think uh, if I can get it from, I'll, I'll text uh, some of the guys and I'll pull that up. But uh, yeah, yeah, we'll put it up. We'll put it up. Um, yeah, Dave. but it's cool. It's cool. Uh, you know, then no, that's the thing is. And so when I saw your guys' TED talk, I thought that was awesome. That there's another cultural um, podcast out there, and you guys, I mean, you guys have had a pretty, you know, like. Uh, nice guest to, to li- listen to you know so uh yeah i know you got a couple mma fighters we had lima as well oh uh, right 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 yeah and she's always funny uh but you know the most interesting thing about lima was that she was an indigenous um 
her major was like indigenous culture. Right. Isn't right? that? Yeah. Right. And I she's like that. super into it. And I, I, I love like, um, I actually want her back on just so I could talk to her primarily about that. Because I already can watch right. her interviews on fighting. Exactly. But uh, yeah. I want to I talk to her about indigenous culture because there's, you know, my questions that I have for that stuff mm-hmm. too. So, yeah. No, that's good. Uh, when when you were in Guam, did you, you came across some uh, motifs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you showed me a book earlier on right. on the motifs that they use for pottery, like right. the symbols and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you went to the museum, uh, you saw some pottery there? Yes. And you took photos, right? Yeah. Uh, is there anything that anyone, Uncle Frank mm-hmm. or anyone else, talked to you about tattoos as far as the culture, as far as what's happening now? Well, you um, know. So there's like a renaissance, I think, right now in, in Guam. It's um, There's a big movement for decolonization. I mean, it's a big topic. From right America? Now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a big topic um, as far as, like, you know, decolonizing and becoming independent and, um, you know, having America pay for um, their their bases there. They're basically like a renter's fee, right? Like, if you're going to be there, that's by all means you can be there, but you have to rent the land from the they're people. Not, they're not uh, paying. They're a territory, so yeah. I would think they're... They, they, they put some funding into the land currently, but I would think... Maybe least, not, not a lot. Right, maybe. not as much as what the people think they, that is that's needed okay. and if you know they want to do some kind of like expansion then you know it's pretty much it's up to them and they just have to like work around the system right right um so that was a big thing and and so we went on this hike also while we're out there uh it's called retidian and so retidian is right there by the ba- military base um and so there's an area that we got to go hike up to and, and see like some real laddie sites where the the ancestral land was like basically untouched unless you cut the you, they cut the jungle down but they didn't touch like the the laddie stones and everything else there so when you walk through there you can actually if you look around you can see pottery still like just laying there scattered no way. and broken yeah it's crazy it's all protected yeah it's protected but i mean it's just there so there's no this just hasn't been found or if you do find it they just ask you to put it on top of a laddie stone so someone can come grab it later so yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. crazy. So I, I found some pottery. I put it back on the laddie stone. I was like, man, that's crazy. And where do they take that after they, they, they you put it on the laddie stone? To the, stone, muse- the museum. To the museum. Yeah, if, if they feel like it's a, a part that needs to go to the museum, they'll take it to the museum. That's real wow. cool. Yeah. Wow. So that, I mean, that's, that's, that was <coughs> awesome. And then, but that area is closed off three months out of the year uh, for the firing range that's right above it because it's right by the, um, the military base. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you know, they close that area off, but then there's still more jungle to clear as far as um, Retidian's concerned in that area. And, you know, who else will, knows what they're going to find? You know, they might find more laddie sites, and, and they got to excavate more stuff out of there. Um, but it's a big, big, um, big battle with the military because now they want to expand that um, firing range into more into more area, which might hit the south um, area. And, and that's uh, motivating them to say, you know what, we got to do something about the decolonization or pay or something. Yeah. It's just motivating them to... Yeah, do a movement it, or something. Yeah, I think every, the movement's been there for a while. It's just I think now it's just gaining more track because social media is able to you're able to talk to people and then they're educating people on decolonization, which is, um, you know, it's it's uh, I don't know, man, it's a rough road. And being born here in San Diego, you kind of see like you're you're American, you know, like yeah, essentially yeah. you're American. And so you know, there's there's always a war zone. There's always going to be war. There's never going to be a, a time where um, there's not. So, you know, how do you balance that all out? It isn't like if we leave or America leaves that no one's going to want that area. So, like I said, man, it's a touchy subject. And, and you know, I don't want to argue with anybody, especially if you're any. Of your I'm views. sure it's all crazy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it but always you, is. But I feel like, Hawaii, you know, like New time. Zealand has like great indigenous programs that work with, um, you know, the, uh, the Kiwis out there and, and the, uh, the Maoris to make them feel like, you know, they're part of the government as well. And so they you know, they fund a lot of programs. Right. And I mean, that would be my, I think my personal hope is that they can, the government figures it out. Hey, we need to start helping the people reestablish their, their, their culture. And so put funding into the cultural language, put funding in here, put funding there. And, but you know, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I'm not, I'm not part of that, you know? Yeah. 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 No, it's probably political and a lot of back end stuff, you know, that we'll never know. Um, Could you tell everyone what a laddie stone is? A laddie stone is uh, is uh, basically the bottom part of um, like a house, right? So there's it's made of two uh, two parts, which is uh, I think the bottom is called the lii, and the top part is called the tosa, right? And so on top of that, um, it's it's like this 
crazy um, symmetrical, like a uh, heavy piece of stone that the, the our ancestors it's carved. It's huge, right? Yeah, it's huge. There's some that are small, which are in for some whatever reason, and there's some that are just gigantic, like stand like megaliths. As, yeah, right. Like stand like as tall as me. I think the biggest ones they found were, I want to say on Saipan, or maybe Tinian. Um, but they're the biggest ones, and those are I think they stand about like eight feet, something like that. And um, but on top of those, there's so there's there's pillars basically, essentially, and you build like four, and then you build your house right on top of them, out of bamboo, strap them up, and what they they said it was used for is basically, you know, if the tide came in, the tide goes under your house, mm. Mm. and if the um, you know the rodents would try to come up, they would try to climb up the um, uh, the laddie stone, and they wouldn't be able to get around that that backside, and they'd fall. So the rodents. Yeah, maybe oh, if there's rats oh, or something oh, okay, like that. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. and you know, and then and, and they said they would also use it for shade if it wanted to be like keep cool. They stayed under under the bottom. Um, but one one thing I did learn is that they said they used it for earthquakes possibly, because the thing is so symmetrical as far as the way it's built. As the bottom sh uh, moves, the earth moves, the tops would shift at the same time. Damn. So they would they would balance the house so they wouldn't fall. That's Obviously, if it's really big, that's it's gonna crazy. Fall, but yeah, when I was when they were telling me that, I was like, "That's insane! I don't even know how you would mathematically make them all the same." You know, you'd have to have some kind and of how like, how big they are. You yeah, know? like how and you lift lifting them up. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's why um, it's a uh, an, an icon for tomorrow's. Oh yeah, you see laddie stones everywhere. Right. You know, for strength, foundation. I mean, all of that. Yeah. Um, you have a tattoo, right? Yeah. I mean, I. Uh, yeah, uh, right there in the middle, yeah. Laddie Stone. You gotta see it. I don't know if you're watching, but yeah, you could see. Oh, it there you go. Yep, got Laddie Stone right here, and um, that's sick. Yeah, that's yeah, a nice tattoo. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> who did it? Yeah, <laughs> this guy who didn't tattoo me on his chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in the day, right? Yeah. back in the day, we did it on a. It wasn't even a, a normal couch. It was like a. It was like a half couch, yeah. you know? It was all crazy. A half yeah. couch? Yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah, it was like one of those uh, side chairs. I don't something? know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but we did it. Um, yeah. But you know what? Uh, how how was that pain-wise? Pain-wise? That shit fucking hurts. <laughs> like I, <clears throat> yeah? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No joke, man. Yeah. No, right oh in the God. middle? Right in the middle, man. Uh, and he's over there, man. He, I swear, Josh would – you would, you would like – some parts you would like keep on going. I'm like, dude, it's not a coloring book, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, God, I'm still a human. <laughs> but he would like dig in there. But it's I really have feelings the, too. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> but those lines, and he would do those small ones. Zit, zit, and I was like, Zzzz. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. The middle killed me, man. The middle killed me. Um, but the you know the pec area is, is it kind of was all right. But yeah, when you get back up to the shoulder and, and yeah, it was yeah, it was painful. Sucks, so, huh? Everyone tell, yeah, everyone who asked me, they're like, oh, man, did it hurt? Hell, yeah, it hurt. Hurt yeah, a lot, actually. Good. Yeah. Highly not recommend it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. A lot of people, well, some people now are saying, you know, when they're like, oh, I love tattoos. What Do you, yeah. do you get that? Yeah, all the time. Where they're like, oh, yeah, I love like, the pain. Oh, yeah, I love the pain. It's so therapeutic. I'm like, yeah, man, I can't so, wait. In my head, I'm like, man, something wrong with you, man. Do, when you tat them, are they chill? In the beginning, they are. You know, then but like maybe like, but you can kind of tell like yeah, yeah, yeah. facial expressions. They're kind of like, you know, they're squinting their eyes, and and I'm not really looking at them, but I'm seeing them from my peripherals. You can tell. You can tell. And I'm like, yeah, you like this, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> Is this good? Yeah, you asked it, for it. So. You know, it's funny because there, there's a pattern. You know, after tatting hundreds and hundreds of people, there's a pattern. You could tell how people act, what they say, how they say it, um, how they sit. Just everything. You could tell yeah. if they're bullshitting or yeah. if they can take it. And people are always surprised by the fact that, for me, the people that sit the best are first-time tattoos. First time. Yeah. They sit the longest and the best. And that's um, shocking to people. They're like, mm -hmm. what? You know, because they always come in so nervous and yeah. scared. And they're like... And they're hyped up. They're like, yeah, you know, they're like, oh, and their I don't friends, know, are, their friends know? are telling them, dude, you're gonna be in so much pain. And they're like, you're getting it that big, yeah, a whole yeah, half yeah. sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> it's so common. I mean, at least for me, to tat first time tattoos, you know, and it's these big tattoos. But mm. and then I make it worse. I'm just like, yeah, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's gonna suck. Yeah. I'm, I'm not lying either. Yeah, but I, yeah. but I, I really let them know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that's the trick, <clears throat> man. That's the trick. It's a mind thing. Yeah. It's just a mind thing. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta 
get them you know because the people that come in like ah oh, it's cool you know it's not that bad they're the worst man. no man i'm i'm, I'm all about the me the pain i'm like no this shit hurts yeah that's yeah, good yeah. when people say oh it hurts i'm like okay all right yeah. he's honest that's yeah. good it's yeah. all good he's been here before we <laughs> actually have a um what do you call it? a pain a pain chart that we came across let me let me see it because i i didn't really take a good look but i want to take a look at it and see if it's if it's true like if it really um if it's honest what what john what is the worst pain that people have when you tattoo them what do you think um when i've tattooed them you know what a lot of people say um like a lot of women will say oh the ribs hurt like i heard they hurt but a lot of times they could sit through that but for me i feel like i've tattooed the foot and they hate the foot you know like that hurts or like the more bony areas mm -hmm. you know like the clavicle or you know stuff like that you ever tattooed the ear, um armpit the armpit yeah my armpit no 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 oh, like, like so a, somebody else's armpit? armpit uh <laughs> no i haven't have you i haven't i've come close. i've came close yeah, i've, I've, I've came, came around close. it <laughs> yeah i try to <laughs> i work around the armpit i've came around sure. it but but you know what's funny is someone that i saw tattooed like head to toe like fully full color everything mm -hmm. and he said pretty much that his armpit hurt the worst so as he would do a, a part of his whole body tattoo yeah he would always do like five minutes of his armpit <laughs> while he's <laughs> that's getting how bad he done like you know he he just needed like blue or red or whatever color yeah so he would he would do all this and then towards the end they just do like five more minutes you no know armpit. every session wow. just five because it hurt that bad so <laughs> it must hurt really bad and just getting close it hurts bad but looking at the chart i mean the whole chest should be all red it's not it's like what yellow what what's yellow like um a medium or something oh more pain okay so you know the calf that's kind of tender too <laughs> interesting yeah you know, I th I still I still believe that um, it's all in the mind because people will get tatted, and Kiko says stinky, <laughs> stinky white. Oh, the armpit! Oh, yeah. uh, Kiko, have you tattooed armpit? You know what? I I bet when you're tatting, it, it's sweating a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. everywhere you tat, that's painful. It starts sweating. Right? Like crazy. Yeah, definitely. And that's another thing. If people say it don't hurt, and you tat them. And they start, you could tell, mm -hmm. you could tell they start beating up or sweating and they'll mm -hmm. be like, no, it don't hurt. Yeah. You could, the body tell, mm -hmm. you know, you could tell. I tatted someone, I remember I was tatting this guy, probably the only one that fainted on me. Really? When I worked in shops, fainting was common, like once a week or something. I mean, people were dropping out and, and the first time I was in a shop and someone dropped out, I was freaking out. I was like, oh, shit, like, what do we do? You know, yeah. what's up? What are we, what are, and, and everyone is chilling. Yeah. They're just like, oh, go get some water. He's just waiting. I yeah. was like, what the, what's going on, man? <laughs> and he looked at me like, you never had anyone faint? Yeah. I was like, no, like, why would someone faint? Right. But right, I right. guess it is common. But I was tanning someone and he was a big dude. He was like 6'1", 6 6'2". 6 mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't remember. But... Um, he was getting, he was getting Chinese characters on his forearm, <laughs> too. What was he getting? And it said like strength and courage or something. Oh gosh, yeah. And I started tatting him, and man, you know that's when I realized I could tell. You could really tell. This was a long time ago though, but you can really tell when you're tanning someone, um, that they're in pain without them squirming or saying anything. I could tell by his skin like it started beating like it started sweating and then there was trembling like a uh, slight real yeah, slight slight yeah, yeah. where i kind of stopped i was 20 seconds in the tent i was just lining it and then and then i stopped and i looked at him and he was like oh he, he was just kind of ready to go and i was like are you okay like yeah, i yeah. never experienced this at all and he's like yeah 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 and i was like it's weird. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was like 15 years ago. I don't know. So so I'm like, okay. So I start tatting again. And okay, so this was back when I was tatting at home. And you should never do that. But so I was, I was tatting and, and he just went boom. And he just dropped on the table. Like I was tatting him. Yeah. And he just dropped. And I jumped up and I was like. <laughs> and it was my dad's friend actually. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he's watching. With a homemade tattoo <laughs> machine. I shouldn't. 
I shouldn't <laughs> say his name or nothing, but um, but <laughs> my dad's like, oh, he's got to eat. <laughs> he was on the table. He was like knocked out. And like, I'm just Dad, like, I think he's asleep. Do? I don't think he's gonna. Man, right I'm liable for this or something. <laughs> and uh, so you know the crazy thing is though that when he when he popped up, and this is what happens when they when they come to, it's like they miss that time. I guess when you get knocked out fighting too. I mean, j- when you get knocked out anytime, yeah, they just forget everything. That what happened? And he like. just woke up and he looked at me like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> like, like I, like I was tatting him, and then I just stopped and stood up and looked at him or something. Yeah. He just looked at me. What are you doing? I was like, dude, you just passed out. Yeah. What so did you say? No, I didn't. He was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh man! And then my dad gave him a plate of food. Yeah. So <laughs> we have to take off my gloves. Wait till he's eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I guess it's common. <laughs> so, so I think, I think it's different. You know, the, uh, it's not. I've had people get like nauseous on me, like they felt oh, right. like. I was tattooing as uh, it was a girl. Her first tattoo was like some kanji on the back of her her neck, and um, maybe like yeah, like five ten minutes in, she's like, "Stop!" I was like, "Are you okay?" She's like, "I have to throw up." And then oh. she goes to the bathroom. She throws up. She comes back, and, and then we finish it. She she was fine, but I was like, "Damn, it was it hurt that bad, huh?" But I guess it's one of those areas too. It's kind of weird. I mean, you know, we're not we're not medics. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard when people come up with questions too. They're like, "Oh, you know, I have this ailment, you mm-hmm. know, it's some weird disease or something." And I'm like, "Have you talked to your doctor?" Yeah. <laughs> you know? what's, I don't know. what's your doctor saying like, about it? They're like, "Can I get a tattoo?" I'm like, I, uh, "So I'm on Google and I'm like, I, I you could have did this. I don't know. You know, like, what's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, 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 yeah. What the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's really crazy. But then, or or some people put, you know, medication. You're supposed to. Yeah. You got to know if it's, like, thinning blood or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, some of it, I don't know. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what you have, man. Please see the doctor first. Yeah. I don't know. It's really weird. Um, Take so, note of that, guys. So Yeah, yeah. Before th- you come in, you know, it. make sure. That that question even crosses your mind. No, cause I'll just doctor. jump on top of that because I remember <laughs> when I was getting this tattoo, I said, "Hey man, uh, I heard ibuprofen helps. Should I take some ibuprofen?" Oh and yeah, he, yeah. And he, and he, <laughs> he texts me and goes, "You know, people do. I mean, it's whatever." And I was like, "This motherfucker's laughing on the side of the phone." <laughs> <laughs> like, no, because it, it thins like, your blood, so you're not supposed to. So but like, I'm right, like, well, uh, I'm not gonna take ibuprofen. So then I looked up like numbing cream and shit because uh, my buddy Kirk was like, "Oh yeah, I put some numbing cream on." And then like I, I was like, "Okay, well let me try some of that maybe." But I got it, I put it on like 45 minutes early before I even got here. And then I asked Josh about it. He goes, yeah, but then you're going to end up messing it up because then it all comes at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, I hope this shit wears off before you start tatting. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I mean, it works. Man, people, that numbing cream, people don't feel nothing sometimes. Sometimes they do. Yeah. But sometimes they don't feel nothing. And and then when it when it wears off. It's like worse. They all start feeling it. They start, start screaming like Jim Carrey. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it. It kicks in. Uh, let me see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go over some some comments. How we do? What's up, man? You gotta sit still if you want it to look good. That's true, man. People be moving sometimes. Dang. Especially like when you're tattooing and they're just kind of like, you know, they're like looking uh, at it every. <laughs> oh, like, come man. on, man. Oh man. Yes, <laughs> that's. You know what? That's a. That's a good topic. Tattoos do's and don'ts. Yeah. Tattoos do's and don'ts. What do we have here? Um, don't drink alcohol. Definitely. Okay, so a lot of people <laughs> say, oh, because you, you bleed a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I learned this probably 15 years ago. I, I just thought, oh, you bleed a lot. You don't want to bleed out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like, you don't want to bleed too much, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's an actual reason because when the blood, when you're bleeding a lot, then ink comes out with the blood. So your your skin doesn't retain the ink. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't know that. So they're like, that's fine. I ble- I'll bleed. It don't matter. Yeah. Well, then you're wasting it because I've tattooed a lot of people that drink a lot back in the day. You know, yeah, they would yeah. be drinking and stuff. And when they come back and it heals, it's all like faded and it, it, didn't, it didn't retain hold, the ink. It's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, I was you know? one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you? <laughs> yeah, I remember I texted you. I was like, uh, well, actually, our friend texted you and said, well, he's been drinking all day. And you were like, well, just tell him stop drinking and come in an hour. Yeah, and stop was, right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> right now, stop. Like, I don't think you understand. It's Sunday. It's football day, man. I was drinking a lot. <laughs> <He's> all, <bro. laughs> well, you probably were one of the guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, probably. Because yeah. when I saw your tat, I was like, damn, dude, we got to redo that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, it's really faded. And I was like, damn. Yeah. But, <laughs> hey, that's that's how it goes. 
Um, Kalani, he says, what did, what is it? it? Takes about ten to twenty minutes before your endorphins kick in, and then it lasts. I think an hour or two. Don't don't remember. That's what I was told by the woman who tatted me. Mine took about five and a half hours with a break in between for lunch. Coming back after lunch, it was super sensitive. That's true. Pain, pain, pain. Whereas in the first few minutes when I started, it was so ticklish. Hmm. Hated that. There, some people, some people laugh. Some people are really like tickled. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like it's crazy. It's really. I crazy. think if you yeah, if you take a long break too in between, yes. like you know, coming back in, you're, there you go. Just just expect to be in some pain. You know, just uh, that, no getting away from that. That does suck. You know, especially with artists, a lot of them want to smoke or something. Yeah, I've heard of artists that do like every fifteen minute smoke breaks. Ooh. Some people. Damn, that's I, crazy. I How? Every names, 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I can only imagine because then you're just like on their time and you're like, oh, man. Can you finish this? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like today. six hours and <laughs> it's like a one hour tattoo. Like for real. Um, let's see. So. Pain of temporary. Arm, you know, but what he said, endorphins? Yeah. That's what it is, man. Yeah. Because people, some people get tatted. Um, they're so worried about the inside of the arm and the inside of the arm does hurt mm -hmm. a lot. It's true But they worry so much about the inside that they They forget about everything else. So I always start on the inside mm -hmm. And they're like, oh doing the worst first, you know, I'm like, yeah <laughs> Get <laughs> yeah. it out of the way. Oh, huh? yeah. Yeah, because for me, I'm sense. like, I don't want to tat You know for three hours and and they're already kind of depleted their energy's gone. Yeah and then we're like, okay, let me start the inside. Not good. So I start on the inside and then, you know, Work the rest should out. be easier. Yeah. But some people that put a lot of stress and energy on pain in a certain area and they really prepare for it, which is good. Mm -hmm. Like I'll just tap like the normal spot and they're just in a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot like yeah. it's common where they're yeah. like oh you know and i'm like oh it's weird it's a normal <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't, hurt. <laughs> shouldn't hurt right here like you just handled all this <laughs> yeah it's true man um let me see okay w what's other tattoos do's and don'ts um eat yeah eat something before don't get tattooed on an empty stomach um both the client and the artist yeah, I, always I think, I, think I, I added that little note in there. <laughs> were you were you part of this? <laughs> yeah, who I wrote mean, this? I mean, for sure, I, for sure, the clients. Yeah, make sure you come in on a you know you you ate something before you get tattooed, and then I was like, make sure I eat something too. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> take a note. No, take take no, note. Eat something before I tattoo because so I don't want to be the one tattooed and then I pass out. Yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. I don't want. <laughs> you know, so, honestly, sometimes when I when I because I hardly eat, but when I do tat, sometimes I I get a little like dizzy. I'm like, yeah. Break. We gotta take a break. I gotta go get some. Sometimes I remember break. one time I was tattooing it and then like you know I stopped to like to to grab something and then the music happened to stop too, and next thing you know my stomach just <laughs> and then my clients like oh did you eat today I'm like oh you heard that huh okay. <laughs> <I'll stay. laughs> yeah they got me <laughs> that's funny so. man there's a lot of I bet you there's a lot of tattoo stories oh like, yeah we could just talk for days, yeah yeah man. yeah definitely damn. Um, okay, another do not do not smoke weed. Yeah. Um, enhances the pain. You know that's funny. That's funny because I think. Um, I think I tried that once. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I think I tried that, and. Like you, so. Um, like you smoke weed and you tattooed yourself. Who are you, man? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> You're like, let's see if this hurts. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, why that's why i didn't know how to word it but yeah i yeah. think, I think <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> i think i was like i was like this you know like that's the best anecdote for pain right and yeah. then i'm like and then i was going and i was like this sucks yeah, yeah like yeah. it's like all focused on that like uh -huh. super focused you know <laughs> i was like i can't do it i cannot do it um <laughs> but I'm sure I'm sure you've had people that, that come in high. Oh right? yeah, you and know, how do they do? a lot how of the, a lot of the time they'll they can, they'll play it off, you know, and yeah, you know they'll play it off and oh it's fine, and then um, and then I just ask them, are you good? They're like, oh yeah, I just I smoked before I got here, and a couple minutes later after that, then they're like, oh now it hurts, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I think if you if you don't talk about it, then they're okay. But once I ask them, like, 
or if they say like, oh yeah, I smoked, then now it's in their head and now they're focused on the pain. Right, right, right. right <laughs> so right. now it hurts all of a sudden, you know. So it's really crazy. I think every anything that you do, like even if you drink, I think you really have to get drunk to mm -hmm. like not feel it, like drunk, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you just take shots and stuff, I think you still feel it. Uh, I think if you take painkillers, people mm -hmm. still feel it. Um, well, yeah, man. I think I think you would feel it anywhere. I mean, it's a damn needle cutting your damn body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I think no they, getting away from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that yeah. damn thin one. I don't know what you were using. <laughs> the thin one. He's uh, like, that shit man, hurt. you're grabbing that thin one again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he gets to that thin one. He starts making a small line. I'm like, oh Jesus. Uh, that's, it's like the worst, man. That is the worst. That is you, like you know, and, and I I tap people every day, and I'm just like, I, I don't want it. Yeah. I don't want to tap no more. I, I don't want to tat because yeah. I do. I do want more, but I'm just reminded every day of the pain. I'm like, damn, dude. I remember when I got tatted. It's not. Right. Oh yeah, man. It, it, bro, it, had, it, it brought a lot for me to like walk up to you and be like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it yeah, took yeah. 14 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> you finally yeah. got the courage. You're like, yeah, we're ready. I'm going to Guam. I got to fix this up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man. It's uh, funny. It hurts. It I does. Mean, it yeah. so does. It what just, about um? Let me ask a question for like do's and don'ts when we come in when people come in as a like a tattoo person or getting tattooed is there something we shouldn't do obviously not piss yeah. you guys off but you know um where do we begin nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean like uh one of the things i would say is uh like bringing the like a whole crew with you you know like one two oh, people entourage. yeah like an entourage mm. you know bringing one two people that's cool you know moral support and whatnot but once like six people come in five people you're, you're kind of like how do you play you know host to everybody you know mm. you, when you're at the same time you have to cater to the tattoo yeah, you're doing you're trying you know? to focus yeah it's trying to focus and then you have people like kind of hovering over you like then you get <laughs> the questions the like oh how does this work? How does that work people oh uh, yeah oh yeah you'd be surprised man yes. yeah yeah i've had someone come in multiple people they come in they bring friends or people and then they come around like i literally have i had to it, it's kind of cool that people do things because they create rules. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> like yeah, you're like, yeah. okay, got to make a rule. But I, I have a tape that says do not pass, yeah. you know, because m many times actually, like friends will come in the back and they'll be all like over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Like over there, I probably wouldn't have created a rule, you know, like yeah. if they were like far away. Yeah. But when they're like all up, like really looking, watching, and then making comments and like he said asking questions and you're trying to focus or mm. you're doing your thing you know and there's a lot of things you do um you know john yeah. we're like you're tatting and you have a way of doing it you, you're gonna do a line a certain way you know what you're planning you yeah. know but someone don't know if you're watching like what the hell yeah well, yeah you're you're going off the line you know what i mean like, <laughs> it's like it's like um that's a good point because like you know how you do things a certain way let's say i gotta let's maneuver this yeah. way to pull a nut pull a line or something and then oh sorry you know i bumped into <laughs> you you know like i didn't know you were sorry am i there. in your space yeah no <laughs> I forgot. You know, I forgot I was tattooing here. You know what I'm saying? But that is true. That is so yeah, true. Yeah, but it's Damn. like yeah. And, and then they're like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Like, they're like, "Oh, sorry." And then they go to the other side, all close. And yeah, you're like, I gotta, f I gotta go there and in like go two seconds. There. Yeah, go okay. stand outside. Here. <laughs> what are you guys drawing there? A bird? Is that a bird you're making? <laughs> yeah. Did he ask for a bird? Oh man, it's not cool. You know, and and then it's hard. Where's the line? You know, because. Because you wanna you wanna say you wanna be like hey can you just stay over there yeah, yeah but yeah. then but then the energy and and everything just shifts true because now the the client might be like yeah get over there what the hell right <laughs> but 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 then that person he feels uh offended or yeah. you know like oh man I was just doing you know and then he starts talking and and, and the energy while getting tatted has to be like positive yeah. it's got to be real positive it has to be so it's hard to juggle all of this you know being a tattoo artist is so much more than just tatting mm -hmm. it you know the business side the the customer service yeah. the cleanliness hygiene the technical the te the equipment i mean goes on and on but yeah. but yeah that's a that's a really good point and um yeah, that's you know a good back, question man good question yeah Definitely. good question oh yeah i was wondering because i mean i still want to get more tats just to fix yeah. up some other ones but uh I want to know what I shouldn't be doing. Notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taking notes. And you guys sure. out there, man, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, now's the, now's the, this would be the, the perfect time. time. Yeah. Now's the time to ask. Um, 
Oh, Kalani said, if I were to faint, I'd say finish my tech quickly. Everyone says that. <laughs> <laughs> is it done? They wake up, is it done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, and then some people say, oh, I'm going to sleep. Or if I sleep, just keep going. You know, yeah. you know, sleeping. Sleeping's a thing, a yeah, topic. It is. Yeah. Because I swear, I, I had one person sleep. I've had people doze off mm -hmm. and maybe sleep for a minute or two. I've had, I had one client like pass out sleeping and snored so loud that people could hear him in like two rooms over. I'm not even lying. He was like, s like s snoring where it was loud for me and was I'm patting a, him. Was it an arm piece or something? No, it was on his ribs. Oh, he's crazy. Yeah. It was on his ribs. <laughs> he's not normal. Okay. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I was tatting him and, and he was a big dude. He was, <clears throat> he was Samoan black. Right. Mm. And Samoan's got something with their pain, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Just like Sunni. Yeah, yeah. Soon he smashed his hand in the tailgate. Mm -hmm. Like we were getting ready for a festival and he had his hand in the middle of the tailgate and someone closed it. And I was like, oh, like I, I couldn't. I wasn't in time to say, don't do that. Yeah. And his hand just smashed. And then and then he was like, he looked, he opened it. His hand was all like crazy. Like oh, skin was ripped up. Oh, yeah, no. I'm not I'm not joking. And yeah. he goes, it'll be fine. <clears throat> Just freaking that out. That sounds I was like, like Sudi. I could picture him doing yeah. that too. Huh? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, Samoans, I don't know. But but even when I tat, when I tattoo Samoans, because, you know, they get the pay on stuff. Yeah. But this dude was Samoan in black, and he, he, he was getting a big rib piece, man. And he was sleeping for half the tattoo. Wow. And, and when I was tatting him, he was... He fell asleep, and he was leaning on me like he was going to fall off the chair. So you were holding so him I up too, So I was pushing huh? on him, like tatting him. I'm <laughs> yeah. sweating. Like, like doing a workout, like tatting him. Yeah. And then. <laughs> you didn't want to wake him? Like, no, no. I would like, shake oh, him. Hey, I would hey, shake oosh, him. Like, and he's like, oh, oh sorry. I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like. What the hell? All right. So, so, but I found out what woke him. What was that? When I wipe him. Oh, that's. It. Oh, when stings. I woke him, yeah. he's like. <gasps> Damn, Oos, that's cold. <laughs> 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 I swear. <laughs> Every time yeah. I was like, oh, time to wake him. <laughs> yeah. I got, a good, got a good question here. What is your favorite body part to tat? Um, I would like I like the parts that are already kind of like stretched out just because you mm. don't have to really stretch them out too yep. much, you know, like what? So like uh, like the side of your leg or like, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, thigh. Like the thigh or the like the arm, like the outer forearm. Those are like my favorite spots to tat just because they're. Just so easy. Yeah, you know, all day. Like, yeah, you shoot all me day. those all day. What's a um? What's a bad? What's your worst? The the more the more stretchier parts for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the more like well, you uh, gotta like. like I like, feel sorry stretch. for whoever has a tattoo. B. You know what I'm saying? I'm a <laughs> I'm a I'm a I guess a stretchy guy. I don't know whatever. <laughs> but um, but like the inside bicep is kind of you know it's kind of tricky sometimes. Um, Especially if you're going up in this area yeah. and the stretch marks, you know. Yeah. yeah. Elbow. Everyone has sure. them. That's that's like yeah, elbows hard. That's a really hard to tattoo. You know, you know what's hard is when you do it and you let them know, hey, it's not gonna it's not gonna hold. Yeah, you're gonna have to come back. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, we like it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is what happens. And the feet, the hands, the elbows, anything that bends. You know, even sometimes here, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, those are the worst because they're gonna have to come back. Definitely. Man. I don't. I honestly, I don't like. I, it's uncomfortable tatting chest because the angle. Oh, yeah. The angle is so hard, dude. Yeah, yeah. Getting up yeah. to the neck. It was, yeah, it was, on the, you know, right? It was, def it was definitely, uh, <laughs> it was definitely uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. Like, I was, like, sitting there, like, I got my head, like, tilted over to the right, watching Netflix, and he's over here, like, ping, pong. Yeah. <laughs> I get in my headphones, like. Yeah. Oh. I was, like. Then I'm, he, like, can you move over a little more? He's, yeah. like, I, no. <laughs> I yeah. can't. I'm trying. <laughs> Yeah, as, in, uh, as far as my neck will turn, Josh. You know, <laughs> here goes a, here goes a don't for uh, anybody who's listening. Don't go work out your chest and then get tattooed right after that. Yeah, because <laughs> it goes through outside pain and inside pain <laughs> that you will never want to experience. <laughs> it's the worst. I did that with uh, this last tattoo and it was it the worst those, experience. Yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up. I was like, <gasps> my chest Double is on whammy. fire. <laughs> It's sore. Oh my god! I can yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people like that though. Like they'll come in. Oh, by the way, I just hit legs, so my, my calf is ready to go. Yeah. Like, all right, <laughs> like, let's let's see how it feels in a couple of days. Yeah. You know, yeah, not you. smart. There yeah. you go. Another Funny. don't. Awesome, man. Um. Okay. Someone said, "Oh, uh, do you refuse them if they're high?" 
So if something comes in all high. You like high you on know. life? Like high because they're happy <laughs> yeah. to get tattooed? Or, yeah, or like high, like high. Uh, it's hard to say, you know. Like, you know, we have to. We have yeah. to. If someone comes in drunk or high or, you know, on drugs or whatever, we, we can't. We yeah. can't take them. But luckily, we don't get that. Yeah. Because we're appointment only. Yeah. Definitely. So, but when I was working downtown and stuff, yeah, we got that. All day, huh? Yeah. It's not fun. Working at, how how you know what you how about you oh yeah I've how's my, working how's working a shop I've, uh, I've had my fair shop. share of drunks and uh, and high guys you know what I'm saying so it's I, I hate it I don't like it, it. sucks huh? yeah or that, that we were like right next door to like a bar slash restaurant and during mm-hmm. like a like I take like a whatever I used to smoke cigarettes back so I t- take a <laughs> smoke break or whatever and they'll go I'll be right back they'll go next door and I think they're gonna get like a drink or something like a water or something. But they're like, oh, I just took a couple shots. So I'm like, okay, like you're not supposed to. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? But it is what it is. It happens. What can you do? You know. Um, but I, you, we get them more than just than how we do here. You know, because like you said, we are a walking shop, and people have to. Or not a we're we're a appointment, appointment only shop. Yeah, yeah. So they know better than that. You know. So yeah, and that's 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 really good because when I was in there. I had everybody, you know, one of the don't, one of the do's for do's and don'ts is, uh, take a shower. Yeah. Hygiene. You know, and, and normally, no, it don't really matter. But in that street shop I was at, Oh yeah. It mattered. Cause it's, yeah. I mean, I remember this one dude came in and, oh man, he had the hairiest chest mm-hmm. I've ever seen. And I don't care. He's like a bear. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like the top of someone's head, like all over <laughs> here, you know, like, like normally I don't care. It's, it's whatever, but I have to shave it. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Just imagine that. You got to use your good razors too. <laughs> yeah. Dang. And, the and Mach fives. Hey, and the shop <laughs> provided like not the good razors, yeah. you know? So I was like, like the, the Mach big, negatives, you, you know, know like the plastic cheapy. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. I swear I was on them for like an hour or something. I'm you not like, joking. You had like, like 10 razors laid out already. Like, damn it, this was dull. I already. probably was using one because, like, you know, yeah. it, it was cheap and, you know, we only had one. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> I remember I took forever to do it and he just came from work. And, like, it was all bad. It was mm. all bad. It was just all bad. <laughs> so, yeah, just shout. Like, well, be clean. Yeah. Know? Do you tattoo genitals, John? Me? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> there's no, there's not enough money in the world for that. Not, not at all. I'm sorry. Do you? Da- it's that's hard to break Felix. it to you guys. Yeah. Felix, do you tattoo genitals? I'll pass them all to you, man. I yeah, got you. let us know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst experience you had with a client? John? I think the worst ones I've had were the I've had a guy kind of tell me what to do. Like I'm over, oh. you know, you, you got those people. Like they think they know like how everything should be, but there's certain ways the tattoo has to be done. You know, like I guess you could say like guidelines or rules. You know, f- for it to to look good. You know, and they wanted all, all they had all these ideas. They wanted all these things incorporated into the piece, and I'm just like, look, man, yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. gonna look cluttered. It's not gonna yeah. look good. And they're like, no, nah, man, I tr- that's what I want. And I'm like, I guess that's what you want then. <laughs> That, pic, that tattoo, I don't think, made it to my Instagram, just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are wondering, you're not going to find That's that true. One. That's another <laughs> don't is don't come in with, you know, a list this long <clears throat> and want a tattoo that small. It's yeah. like, it's not going to happen, you exactly, know? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I've had that. Yeah, I totally yeah, yeah. had that. And, and I've done tattoos that's, like, this big. And everything had a meaning, mm-hmm. but, like, what they wanted. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want, I want, you know, a plumeria for my daughter. I want a hook for my husband. Mm-hmm. I want, you know, and I'm, and I'm like it, in I'm this. Like, but you could do whatever you want, you yeah. know, like you know, do your flow. Like how? okay, how? 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 Yeah. How? <laughs> <laughs> Can we expand it a little? Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking. I want to keep it in this, you know. Mm. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard to work with. But I mean, you, you try know. your best, though. You know, like you know, I'll do my best. But in the back of your head, you're like, man, ah, dang. But dude. I mean, in the end, you do it. You and, do it. And yeah. They like it. Mm-hmm. But you don't like it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey, it's your tattoo. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, their yeah. tattoo. They, they're the boss. Um, all right. Well, we can go on forever, but we will continue when we talk tattoos every yeah. other day. Um, but let's uh, finish off with some culture shot, guys. Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. Rich wants to, um, you know, culture shock is actually meant for uh, muscle repair. Hey, Josh. 
Okay. So it helps to repair muscle and, and helps with pain. And uh, so it can't, it, it might be a little discomfort, but just just know that discomfort is for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> Josh right. getting all excited. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, let's do it. Let me see. So today we're going to be asking questions about Guam. Oh, nice. You know, to be fair to John. <laughs> no. To be fair to John. Okay. Let me see. So right now they are going to be uh, getting set choice. up. It is. <laughs> you know what? We will do. Yeah. Multiple choice. Yes. And they're going to be putting the leads on their forms. <coughs> and. Okay. So the rules go. Um, I'm going to ask some questions and whoever hits the bell first gets to answer the question. If you get it right, the other person gets shocked. If you get it wrong, you get shocked. Damn it. And the other person has to answer correctly. So yeah, you might have a chance <coughs> of two people getting shot. This is just a fun way, Rich, <laughs> of us uh, learning stuff about different cultures, different oh. facts. And we have fun doing it. So, and and you guys out there can join along, okay? So I'm gonna ask a question, um, and you guys can see if you if you get it or not. Uh, Kalani said, "I want to try that culture shock one day. I had those electrodes on my leg before for testing. I think you guys should just, I think you guys just increase that stimulation a bit more, just a bit, <laughs> just a bit. It's safe. It's safe. Okay. I'm gonna fail miserably. Damn it." <coughs> Got it. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Here we go. One second. And and those of you just tuning in, this is live. Please just engage, ask questions. Uh, we just had a whole talk about tattoos. And if you guys have any questions or things you guys want to talk about, just comment. We read all the comments and then send us messages and... We could talk about it on the next show. We do it every week, every Tuesday. We're on live <coughs> at 6.30. So check us out. All right. So here we go. Work out today, man. Shoot. <laughs> here we go, guys. One. In what body of water is the island of Guam located? Pacific. Damn. Pacific Ocean. That's true. Okay. I'm tired. That was close. That was close. Is that you? Hey, man, it's me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> you know what? That was, that was, sure, that okay. Works, works, All right. Works. Let's just switch this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. All right. All right. Okay. For some oh, reason, we always be doing that in, in the show. Okay. Oh, look, what's wrong with my hand? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Just for that, John. Yeah, you can go for it. Mm. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. You got it? Yep, you got, got it? it? Okay, all right. Good test. All right, number two. <laughs> what is the major religion in Guam? Catholic. You know it, Catholic. <laughs> that's easy. All right, Catholic. Go for it. You ready, yeah. John? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. What are the huge pillars of stone? <laughs> Laddie stones. Oh, you got <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, you got that. Damn. All right, Rich. Ready? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you guys, I'm only hitting five. I'm only hitting oh five. There's God. eight, so I'm only hitting five. Okay. Um, all right, number four. What are the two official languages of Guam? Uh, Chamorro and English. That's true. Damn it. All right, John. Hope you guys are learning out there some Chamorro facts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's... That's good. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you so much. Like still feeling on my thumb. Right I kind of feel the pain. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. I can't do it. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, this is a tough one. For me, probably, yeah. 
<laughs> mm, this is interesting. Okay, number five. What is a <laughs> belimbao tuyan? Come on. It's a musical instrument. Wow. Oh, dang. Uh, he knows Bilan it. Bilan Bantuza. Okay, good. Yeah. See, I don't even know what I was saying. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. We just all learned that. Set me up, man. Oh. <laughs> Bilan Bantuza. I think I said that right. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> It's starting to feel good, though. They actually make those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a Chimo man who makes those in San Diego. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. His name is uh, Tony, Uncle Tony. Hmm. Can't the last what does it look like? It's a, So it's a long, like, bow. And it has, like, a. So if you rip a tire open, it has, like, those strings. Those yeah, yeah. Bow. They take one of those. They pull it across the, the, the bow. And then at the middle of that is um, the ipu, the, like, the. Huh. Like the like the gourd, mm. and they cut it in half, and then it makes it like a um, like a twang noise. That's cool. Like a yeah. ukulele or something? <coughs> no, like a twang, like a wang, but dung 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 dung, dung oh. almost like an Aboriginal sound. Mm. Dang. Yeah. How come I never seen that? Yeah, something like that, almost. Yeah, those. That's the. Um, oh. Okay. The in, that so that's that right there is what you would use to make one. Oh, I see. Yeah. Just learned that. <laughs> Margarita Mango said, come on, Big John. <laughs> I said Meg, man. Come on. Um, okay. All right, here we go. What is Guam's official tree? A, Ifil. Ifil. Ifit. Ifit. Um, B, a palm tree, or C, eucalyptus? I go Ifit. True. <laughs> Come on, Big I John. <laughs> Come on. I should have known that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Our, our, our song. Yeah. Uh, can, tree. can they okay. see this? Can they see his arm? Yeah, oh, man. Okay, okay. Okay. It's like, <laughs> okay. It's my strong hand. <laughs> Seven. Don't get tattooed tomorrow. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm strengthening your arm. Um, all right. What is Guam's national flower? A. Sunflower, B, Lily, C, Bougainvillea. <laughs> <laughs> Boca, uh, the Bougainvillea, but it's not how you say it. Uh, okay. Boca, Boca Villa. I think it's Boca Villa. Boca, Boca Villa? Villa, yeah. Okay. One, of the, one of the guests might be able to say it, right? Or at least do the, but it's bo- the Boca Well, I'm Villa. learning. That's, yeah. that's good. Actually, those are all over San Diego, too. Is it? Yeah. Like and all it's, and it's the Guam. What's it look like? National flower. <laughs> <laughs> Josh's face <laughs> Cause I'm doing it I'm like uh, Okay Alright um, Okay number 8 Guam was ceded To the United States By what country In 1898 A. Portugal Spain B. Spain Oh <laughs> Correct <laughs> mm. How's that feel? It feels good and like you're weird, strong. Huh? You're strong because you got that like nothing. Damn. Maybe I need it. I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. What'd you do over there? Did you crank it up? <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get ready. Man. All right. Number nine. What is the capital city of Guam? A. Tamuning, B. Hagatnya, C. Jigo. Hagatnya? Is that right? You Damn are correct, gosh. sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, yeah, that one hurts. No, well. You got it? Yeah, look at my, look at my hand. You're strong, man. Dang, that's like all the way up. You're just taking it. <laughs> I'm we got to move it. I'm, I'm crying. on his chest. I'm crying as No, well. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Okay, last one, guys. Uh, what is Guam's highest point? A, Mount Lam Lam. Mount Lam Lam. Yeah. Damn. I know this that because my, it, my, uh, my family. When, when did you get back from Guam? Like the other uh, day? Last week. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're like day. fresh, too. Like, Dang. I, yeah, I know what's up. <laughs> 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 You okay. got a refresher. It's okay. Go for it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. 
<laughs> oh, you can start now. You can start now. <laughs> oh, you're strong, man. You just you just sit there and take it. That's good. What stuff. else can I do? I can't do nothing <laughs> else. You know? I might as well. Just, I can, that's all I could do. Sit there and not take it. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. All right, guys. Oh man. Good stuff, man. Good show. Good stuff. We just learned a lot about Guam. Thank you, Rich, for joining us. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Um, go ahead and let everyone know how to find um, you on Parbar and your dance group. Also. Okay, so uh, Urentia, uh the dance troupe, we're based out of National City over there on 16th Street out of the Pasocket. Um, you can follow us on Instagram on uh, UrentiaSD.com or whatever the Instagram is, UrentiaSD. And uh, Facebook is just the Urentia Dance Troupe. And um, we only charge $10 a month, which is basically Damn. just to pull. Yeah, it's just to pull rent. We don't get paid for this, so... It's not like uh, we make money off it. It's really just to teach our culture and to keep our kids involved in positive That's things. a big deal. Yeah. So You hear that, everyone? That's like straight from his heart. So we yeah. do music. We do music. Um, we do drumming. And then we do dance. And those are Saturday classes starting at 9 a.m. to um, 1130. And if you are a nanny, which are with the, the youngest we have is like four. Um, you have a nanny class that starts at 8 o'clock. And then we also have a mama's nana, nana class, which is uh, for the ladies who don't want to do the knee motions and stuff like that so you know some like maybe 30 and older if they want to do that which is uh because a lot of our our motions are really low based and oh, they, okay. they can they can hurt if you have bad knees so um that's for Urentia. and then um for the par bar we are usually live on sundays and our our podcast releases on wednesdays and you can find us at um facebook par bar um instagram par bar cast and i I think our Twitter is also part of our cast. And you so guys are live Sunday on Facebook? <coughs> yes. Uh, oh, okay. Facebook and YouTube. So you can go on and, and comment, all that. Same right. thing. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Nice. Um, we kind of do like a segment for just the questions, which is kind of like what you guys did today, uh, like 10 minutes. But um, we, we have different guests every week. Uh, this week we have the ones from Hava who are doing the uh, San Diego oh, teaching competition. Okay. Uh, uh, Lindsay and her team, she'll be there um, this weekend, this Sunday. And, um, yeah. There so you go. There it is. Check it out. Check out Parbar and his crew. Um, Irentia. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Um, Thank you, man. You guys, we'll have, we should have James back next week. We'll see. Um, and then also we'll be talking tattoos next week. We still are waiting on Lee Nui to find out more about the Vatican trip. He's, you know, busy doing his thing. It's, yeah. it's kind of hard. But, you know, we'll keep you guys up to date on that. And... The shirts are also coming out. I know I keep saying that, but they're, they're back order on the shirts. We get the good quality stuff, so we're waiting. It don't matter. But, yeah, other than that, we'll see you guys next Tuesday at 630. Thanks. Cool. Shoot. See you later.